Welcome to the Outrun Sports and Entertainment Podcast. I'm your host, James Savalitis, and I'm joined today by former Darren Marlin basketball junior and current men's D-grade Stallions player, Christos Hatsis. Good to be here. Honoured to be back in the South Shack. How are we? Pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Um, <clears throat> I like how you called it the South Shack. Yeah. Um, That's what it is. Well, that's that's what it is. So, just so all you guys there at home understand exactly what uh, we're talking about, there, we've already done this. Yeah, we've we've done this. We, we filmed, yeah, we filmed what we called, well, what I've called the pilot. Um, it was supposed to be episode one. This is now episode one. But I was originally calling the podcast the Sav Shack. Mm. It's no longer the Sav Shack. It's the Outrun Sports and Entertainment Podcast. But that episode. That's in the archives for another time. That's going to come out eventually. Um, no, you, you, know, you lost, know what, Chris? That's the lost conversation. You, you know what, Chris? I'm sorry to say this, but I got very frustrated during the editing process and deleted it. <laughs> you did. I, I did. You did. I just deleted it. You did not. I did. You I did deleted it. it. My, my hard time. I, t- I tell you one of the issues. I tell you one of the issues. So... I'm filming this with two Kaiser Bass X450 oh, yeah. uh, action cameras, right? And I'm filming on the lowest resolution, so don't judge them based on what you're saying. Okay? I'm filming them on the lowest resolution for a reason. The file sizes were massive. Yeah. Were they really? Huge. How big are we talking So, so they, they film in 10-minute videos. Yeah. So they film 10 minutes and then they start recording a new 10-minute video. Each one was nearly five gigabytes. You're kidding me? Yeah. Holy shit. On, yeah. the, on the lowest resolution. <laughs> No, no, that was that was on the highest. Oh, so, so now this is on. the I lowest. put them to the lowest just to make right. it easier for me to do the. Um... Yeah, God, that's high. They must be pretty good. <laughs> not sponsored. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, that's right. We're not sponsored. Really not but sponsored. who knows? Possibly, possibly, and I'm hoping. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Very ambitious. Uh, I'm hoping. Who knows? Maybe they're like, you know what? These guys are pretty good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which naturally. Let, let's just send them some stuff. Yeah. Let's send them the X500. I don't know if there is an X500, but let's send them the X whatever uh, on, thank you. Whatever right the camera, better version eventually. is. Uh, Possibly. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, so I got very frustrated during the editing, yeah. so I deleted it. So there's no. Um, and and because, the, because the video size was so huge, yeah, I. Yeah, it a while to delete <laughs> Well, I had to compress the videos, and because I was mucking around so much with the videos, the video, the the speed of the video, I must have changed it by a fraction. Yeah. So the the audio didn't match it. So it it doesn't. You don't notice it for the first twenty minutes. Oh, really? So it's a tiny. It's a tiny, tiny bit, change. but as it progresses, yeah, you, uh, you you notice it. So that. Nightmare. Yeah, that was the problem. Oh, fuck, there was a good conversation in that. Yeah. <laughs> There was plenty of good conversation. Yeah, that's right. Um, but, yeah, so just so everyone knows, um, <clears throat> this is the Outrun Sports Ent- Entertainment Podcast. Um, we're just going to let the conversations flow. We haven't planned anything. Nothing planned. Promise you that. Yeah, we have <laughs> not Guaranteed. planned anything. It's just letting the conversation flow. As I always say, be as the frog in the pond. He does not seek the fly. The fly comes to him. <laughs> Okay, I learned that from Hey Arnold, the episode Arnold Learns Karate from His Grandma. Okay, that's where I learned that. I haven't heard of that in a while. And your mate Marcus Cataldo. Cataldo. Ten years ago. Marcus Cataldo. Ten years ago, my 21st, I said that in my speech. Mm. I was just shedding some wisdom to the younger guys. (laughs) I'm sure he carried it with him. Well, I don't know. Do you reckon he remembers that line? Probably. You reckon? Doesn't forget much. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Um... The main thing we're probably going to end up talking about, though, is basketball on this podcast. Naturally. Yeah, exactly. So in the basketball community at the moment, the most popular thing going around, because there's not really any basketball at all, is the last dance. Mm. The Chicago Bulls 97-98 season starring Michael Jordan. You up to date with that? You've seen all I've seen all six episodes so far. I caught up last night for this. I know. I'm very happy about that. I pushed through the most tired state of my life. I was slapping myself in the face. I was sitting on the couch the last half an hour. <laughs> and I was actually tr- tr- like going, like fucking falling asleep. And then I would s- rip my head back. Because <laughs> I knew you'd want me to watch him for this. But yeah, good series so far. I like it. It's crazy. It, just ju- it jumps back and forth a lot, but. 
Oh yeah, so it'll be ninety seven, ninety eight. Then it's it keeps 84. going back to the last season, and then it's working its way to yeah, that season because it, it's introducing you to certain characters yeah, in the yeah, current yeah. season. But yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, well, like if you pick your phone up, then you're like, what, what the hell? What, what year are we in? in? Yeah. yeah, what year so are we in? Um, look, when I first heard about it, uh, Josh Streha. <laughs> oh, shout out to JS, my man. <laughs> yeah. Let's get jo- that W Warzone. Josh Streha, who'll be in that chair one day. Yeah, I'm sure he will. Um, <laughs> he will be a great, great man to sit in this chair. Yeah. So Josh Streha was the first one to tell me that it was coming up. Mm. And I thought, really? Like, who cares? Another Jordan. Another- well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I just thought, what, what's what been left unsaid? Yeah. Well, it's that like hasn't already about the Chicago Bulls, yeah. the most storied. I mean, the 90 Chicago Bulls is the most storied NBA franchise or NBA dynasty. Yeah. Why are we still talking about it? And now? he's the most storied player of all time. Oh yeah, he's one of the most storied people of all time. Yeah, exactly. So I just thought, why are we hearing this again? Yeah. And I thought, you know, I, I thought I would learn nothing new. Well, it's a different twist because it's showing you not just him, really. Like it's it's got a lot of different stuff in it. Well, yeah, it's showing you the whole Bulls. Yeah. It's really a Bulls documentary. Yeah, it's Michael more Jordan. than a, yeah, it's yeah. not just, but they do obviously focus on him. But, but still, like, again, it's the Chicago Bulls of the 90s, what a lot of people already know about it. And yeah. I've, I've seen a lot of a lot of it already. Right. Um, so I was a little bit, not that much, I didn't think I was going to learn anything new. Yeah. Okay. But I was wrong. I did learn something new. Yeah. Okay. What did you learn? Um, I can't remember which it must it would have been the ninety yeah it was the ninety seven ninety eight season which is what they're yeah. talking about. Um, did you see Dennis Rodman with the bleached hair and like the the threes? The threes, yeah. For the I, I never knew they were threes. I didn't know they were thirty threes. It looked like leopard print at the start to me. That's what I that's, thought it was. That's what I've always so thought it was. Threes for um, Scotty Pippen making his comeback yeah, from injury. Yeah, thirty three games. Yeah, that's cool, eh? Well, no, he wears number thirty three. Oh. It could have been 33, like 33 games 33 too. Games it, it, it could have been 33 games too. But he wears number 33, 33. So they have 30, he's got 33s on his head. Yeah. I had no idea. I always thought that it was like leopard. Even when they were showing it in the thing, until they said it, I thought it was like a leopard print. Yeah, or I always thought it was leopard. So that, that means a freak. They got me there. Dennis Rodman is a freak. Dennis Rodman is definitely a freak. He's the weirdest person I've ever fucking seen. You should see his Hall of Fame speech. I need to watch that. Yeah, I, I, I can't get it. I can't show it on here because they yeah. might delete the video, uh, take down the video. Um, but he, it looks like he's about to say. So if you haven't seen it yet, you've got to see the Dennis Rodman uh, Hall of Fame speech. It, I'm not a big fan of the speech. Yeah. In terms of it. Couldn't it has a speech. It. Yeah. It's not a great speech. I couldn't imagine it being but very well structured. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He has this moment where he starts talking about his mum. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know whether he was supposed to say a nice thing about her. <laughs> <laughs> what does he say? He, I, I, I don't know. I can't even remember exactly. You've just got to go home I and see it. she kicked him out when he was a kid. She did kick him out. And he's, Surely he's not a fan of her. He isn't a fan of her. Yeah, he's yeah. never forgiven her for that. Yeah. And you can just tell. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. in this Hall of Fame speech, it looks like he's – because his mum is at the thing. Yeah, right. So it's like, oh, this is a heartfelt moment and he's yeah. going to be thanking his mum. And I think he tried to, but he didn't. <laughs> Good. <laughs> she kicked him out. He d- yeah, exactly. Yeah, and she, now she's around for the fucking – for the crew. Yeah, she's at the speech while he's just – I Ripping suppose on she her. raised him for 18 years before she kicked him out. Right? That is exact. That is true. That's true. Um, that. But, yeah, that, that's funny. If, if you haven't seen it, Dennis Rodman, Hall of Fame speech, you've got to go home, check it out. You've got to check it out yeah, when you I'll get home. Yeah, um, <clears throat> but, yeah, the Chicago Bulls so far um, with this Last Dance documentary, mm-hmm. first two episodes, we talked about it last time, you, and I'm going to bring it yeah, up again. That's all I, I've only seen the first one, I think. Song. At that, oh yeah, so you hadn't seen. I hadn't even seen the second one when we last talked. Yeah, just the first one. So, as I said, they said some pretty bad things about Jerry Krause. Yeah, and I know your theory of they're going to turn him around. Yeah, I don't believe that's how it's going at all. Are, are you serious? I, I don't think they're going to go there. So, just for a little they're bit still, of backstory, they're still bagging on him. Yeah, for a little bit of backstory, um, I believe. Jerry Krause is a genius. Well, I don't. Which he is very like what he, he did was great. He is a genius. I also think he played a big hand in pulling them apart at the end there, getting rid of Phil well, Jackson, Scotty. Okay, Pitt, well let's and just making that clear. And yeah, Jordan was Jordan was 
I'm not playing unless Phil Jackson's coach, whatever. He might have wanted to quit anyway. Well, that's exactly right. Seemed in that last, I think, the sixth episode. Yeah. His fame was like getting to him, and he just was had, had had enough of the constant like swamping. Well, I think he's just he's just done, and he's, he's pretty much done. But yeah, like, but you're done, and you just win a championship. You know, you can probably win another one. You probably would go for another one. Like it's not like his career was by any means over. Yeah, <laughs> I was still the well, best. I mean, he came back three seasons later with the Wizards. Yeah, and he and put him. twenty <laughs> plus points up a game for two and seasons. That's three seasons off. Exactly. So, yeah, he could, he still had a lot left and in the team. how old was he when he came back with the Wizards? He was 38 going on 39. So when and he then 39 going like on 40. 35, 36. Something He's like still that. still got a couple of years at least, at, you know. And he like, didn't seem to – age did not seem to affect him that much. Yeah. Well, <laughs> He's a beast. Yeah. <laughs> well, free. that's why he's talked about as one of the greatest yeah. of all time. The, the world. Yeah. But but I the conversation we had. Yeah. <laughs> the greatest of all time. But before before we get to the greatest yeah. of all time, um I, I think I think exactly what I said is playing out. You think it's gone? There? I think it's playing out. So I said Jerry Krauss is a, a genius and I outlined this is to Chris last time I spoke with him. I outlined the Scotty Pippen uh Horace Grant draft picks. The scouting and getting Tony Kukoc over yeah. um, before Tony that was, Kukoc. That was an interesting part as well when they went to the Olympics. Oh, well, the dream team him. bit, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I don't know what their problem was with me. I didn't even know him. Yeah, I've exactly. Never met these guys, but, yeah. <laughs> and they're just <laughs> completely hounding him in the game. Yeah, but then he he gets tough and comes back yeah, in the I know, next which game. Was sick, that was cool. Yeah, I like seeing that. I love watching the old Europeans play. <laughs> so when I first started. Watching bas- the NBA was Michael Jordan's Wizards years. Yeah. So 2001, 2002 was my first season oh, really properly was. following the NBA. Mm. And watching old Tony Kukoc is awesome. Yeah. A- a- any of the – Vlado Divac, any of those Europeans is great. <laughs> Vlado Divac. Vlado Divac, legend. <laughs> and Arvidas Sabonis. He was a legend. He was a legend. His highlights are unbelievable. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. But anyway – and Pajor Stoyakovich, he wasn't yeah. that he wasn't that old though. Then he still had a lot. Well, he was in his prime back then when I first started following it. Um, but yeah, Jerry Krause brought Tony Kukoc on board. But I, I jumped I jumped the ship. He made the Charles Oakley Bill Cartwright trade. Yeah. We talked about that last that time. Yeah. Bill Cartwright being the one that Bill Cartwright's the reason they have a three peat, the yeah. first three peat. It's all Bill Cartwright. If it wasn't for him, they wouldn't have beaten the Knicks as they wouldn't have had the I Patrick said, Ewing stopper. I give him a lot of credit in that. Yeah, in exactly. He was the Patrick Ewing stopper. Yeah. So that that's why. And you could thank Jerry Krause. And, Patrick and then Ewing can thank him for <laughs> the loss of rings that he might have got if that didn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then Jerry Krause rebuilding the team for the second three, Pete. Yeah. And getting Dennis Rodman on board, getting Luke Longley, getting Ron Harper. Yeah. The guy's a genius. Yeah, he did well. I yeah. feel like what he did at the end, I was like, what was the purpose of like no, well, the team, the beef with Pippen and the beef I think with that's just Bill the edit. I think that's just the edit. Well, Scotty Pippen has nothing to worry about mm. with Jerry Krause, really. I mean, who who signed a long term contract? Oh, that was that was his fault. <laughs> it was completely his fault. That was his own fault. He signs what was it, eighteen million for seven years? For seven years. And this is in a changing um, NBA where as, as salaries far as, are, as far as Jerry Krause goes. <clears throat> Best possible performance of a job ever in that contract. Yeah, exactly. Get the one of the best players in the NBA to sign a fuck all deal for seven years. Yeah, like that. You can't blame him for that. That's your own fault. For yeah, exactly. Contract. And he even says, "Oh, I, I want to, didn't want to risk, you know, security. Like if I get injured and then I, you know, I don't have a long contract, they can't. They'll, they'll get rid of me." But like, mate, come on. Seven, seven years, 18 million. You can make more money than that. Yeah. Like, well, at the, at the time, though, you probably don't know because the, yeah, you I'll didn't suppose. understand the NBA landscape back then. They didn't have those big contracts. Right. But the funny thing is if you look at the 97, 98 salaries of the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan was getting paid $33 million. Which is – and that's back in that time. Yeah. That, that can – like today, that was, that, that's way more. Yeah, it's that's huge. 50 million. It's probably it's yeah. I think it is fifty million. Yeah, I think it is fifty million. No one's even on that right now. Thirty three million. The next highest paid player is Tony Kukoc with like four and a half million. Jesus. Jesus. Okay, and then further down the pecking order is Scottie Pippen with yeah. two and a half million or whatever yeah. he was getting per season. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, Scotty Pippen. That's his own fault. 100%. That's his own fault. There's nothing wrong with Jerry Krause doing that. It's not his job to make give people their best possible, you know, contract yeah, and take exactly. them. Yeah, exactly. He's trying his to build a championship build, team. Yeah, exactly. So I don't have any problem with that. Yeah. But yeah. I, I love the, I don't know if you saw it, but Scotty Pippen's ex-wife came out after that episode and she said that don't, don't cry for Scotty Pippen. Really? Don't, yeah. Don't cry for Scotty <laughs> she Pippen. She would say that. She he, yeah. She was like, he made plenty of money after that season. Oh, really? And I, and I checked it out. So he, he got paid double digits yeah. or double digit millions yeah. every season for the rest of his career, except, How um, well, he had one with the, he had at least one season. He had one season with Houston, which I think was at eleven million. Right. You know, I can get his salary up right now. Yeah, yeah. Do it. <clears throat> Feel free to fill this uh, <laughs> quiet moment. <laughs> it takes two to tango. I'm yeah, sorry. To talk to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the Gary Busey on you. Um. Okay, so I love I love hoop type. Okay, mm. so here's. Can they see this? I'll make sure they can see. It. I'll make sure <laughs> I edit it in so they can see. It. Yeah. But you can see. There you go. You can see the ninety seven ninety eight season. Yeah. Do you want me to zoom in? No, I can see that fine. Yeah. All see. So that, oh, so it shows you the inflation for today, like what it would mean today, or oh, well, there you go. Is that what it's showing you? Yeah, there you go. That is it. Or is that like no, no, that that, that that is inflation. So okay. you've got Houston Rockets eleven million, four yeah. t just under fifteen million for the next. Well, the next season, then fourteen million, oh, eighteen made million, heaps of money nineteen million, he and then then is just just so you know, see how he's got two years there with the Bulls at the end of his career. Yeah. Okay. One of those seasons he didn't even play. Really, the whole season. One of those seasons he didn't even play, and the the one season he did play out of those two seasons, mm. he he played like half the season. I might even be being generous there. Yeah. Okay, so he got paid. Oh, he got paid after, sure. and that's what that's what his ex wife came out afterwards and said. He definitely could have got paid those numbers before as well if he didn't fuck that up. I don't know though. I don't know if he, he would have got that much of what he got. He, he might not have gotten that much because but he would have got like you know solid sevens, eights. I reckon. Yeah. Um. But yeah, but here's the question though: If Scotty Pippen, if if the Bulls are like, you know what, Scotty Pippen's a great player. Okay, we've got a do right by him. And three years into that seven-year contract, they pay him more money. Which they could have, but why would they? Yeah, well, here's the thing. Do they still get Ron Harper? Can they still get Dennis Rodman? Well, they can't get heaps of stuff. Yeah. It's do, going to take do they, cap. Do they have a second three-peak? Maybe not. Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Well, most likely not. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Especially, well, look at that 97-98 season. Scotty Pippen didn't play half of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they needed those other players. Well, yeah. Look, I'm, I'm off. I'm not like backing Pippen there anyway. That's that's business. If you sign a contract like that, that's business. <laughs> the De Niro Smith. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's business. That's they always complain about fucking cold, like organizations being real cold, trading, not even telling him they're getting traded. That's just how it is. Yeah, exactly. You're getting paid millions. You, you know, go have a. Cry. Go have a cry that you got traded somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you make your own decisions, and then if you get traded, you get traded, whatever. That is but that's, it's a that's business. exactly right. It's a business. It allows you to be rich to play basketball. Yeah. So you, you can't pick and choose. Exactly. I mean, you're doing something you like. Yeah. Or you love. Not many people can say that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, Jerry Krause, he built the greatest dynasty ever. Yeah. Okay? By far. Well, that's if you're not looking at the Boston Celtics back when oh, – yeah, Bill Russell. <laughs> when there was no competition. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a bunch of old guys out here that are thinking to themselves, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's a Bill Russell. That was way better than the 90s. That's, a, <laughs> that's way better than today. Oh, yeah. No. Um, but, yeah, Jerry Krause, genius. And then I, I feel like they were starting to make that turn when they were talking about Jordan questioning whether he even had that motivation to continue. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So um, they're saying they're starting to say that he's sort of predicted that this is going to happen. I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily. I wouldn't necessarily say he was predicting it. I. Oh, you know what? Let's uh, let's say that. Yeah. He's he's just anticipating what that they're going to probably going to. Yeah, they're going to need a rebuild. 
sort of happens, isn't and, it? And I mean, like Scotty Pippen, Michael Jordan, Dennis Rodman, these are a bunch of old guys. Mm. Okay, yeah, Michael Jordan still was the best player in the yeah. world at that time, but he, but he was questioning whether he had already done a runner before. Yeah, and yeah, retired and went to baseball. That's true. You got to you, you got to think about these things again. exactly. Another three peak. The patterns there. Yeah, <laughs> happens again. Anyway, what happened that next season? Okay, there was an NBA lockout anyway. That's probably why those contracts are like that. Oh. Okay, so there's a new collective bargaining agreement. Yeah, right. And that they only played 50 games the next season. Okay. Okay. So um, anyway, Jerry Krause, genius. Hmm. Michael Jordan, I, I have this quote. So they, they make it seem like Michael Jordan hates the guy, which maybe he did. They make it seem like a lot of people did, but. Well, this is Michael Jordan. Uh, literally months before they started filming The Last Dance. Yeah, so obviously okay. things are in motion. Michael Jordan, and I quote, Jerry was a key figure in the Bulls dynasty and meant so much to the Bulls and the city of Chicago. Proof. <laughs> <laughs> proof. See, a yeah. quote with Michael yeah. Jordan's and picture next to it means it's it's they proof. filming, so obviously they've got the <clears throat> ideas of what they're going to do in their head. Yeah, so, so they, they they started filming only months later, yeah. so, and, and he said this. Mm -hmm. So it's going to come out in the, in the, in the last scene. So probably. that's what I reckon. Mm -hmm. I mean, Michael Jordan, what's he done as an owner? He added ownership and management. Well, what's he right, done as yeah. part of he ownership or management? He's, he's obviously knows how hard that is. He's got a shit tank. Exactly. Oh, has. The last dance is going to go full circle, mm. and um, it's going to go full circle. How many episodes is there meant to be? I believe ten. Oh, it's getting there. I it's believe. There. I believe it's a. Shit. I believe it's a ten part series. Yeah. I believe it's a ten part series. Right. Um, but yeah, Michael. Jo well, they've. I told you they started the turn already. Yeah. I, know, I know you don't believe so. No. Well, I can sort of see where you're coming from. Yeah, I, I think there are still. You know, up at. Whatever the one was about Pippin, was that four? The Pippin one I think Robin might have three, been episode four. Four was Pippin, I think. They were still bagging him out hard there. Yeah. Maybe he took a turn after that a little bit. But that one I mean, was it, still. Jerry Krause is an NBA <laughs> Hall of Fame executive. <laughs> Sports I've executive. I've never seen you say something so sincere. <laughs> He's a Hall of Famer. You just looked through my soul when you said that. <laughs> he, he is a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Jerry Krause. And Ma Michael Jordan has done nothing as an owner, yeah. nothing as any kind of NBA executive. Yeah. He, he He's he's going to admit so at some stage during this thing, mm. it's, it's going to happen. He's going to say, look, Jerry was great. Yeah. I yeah. understand why he did what he did. Clearly. Now that I'm in those shoes, now that I'm part of own, uh, an ownership now that I've been a general, because he was general manager of the Wizards before playing. Look, their team was unreal. And that's the whole, you can never win a, t a championship with one player. So as much as they, people argue Jordan has six rings, LeBron has three, whatever. Yeah. The, goat, the GOAT combo. Still, at the end of the day, you're never, ever going to win with one player. So everything he did to build that team around Jordan, it was genius. It doesn't, it's not hard to say that. Exactly. He is a genius. It is. He, he was a really good GM. Like, Absolutely the best. genius. Probably the best. Who's better? Y you know what? Yeah, he's the best. <laughs> he is the best. <laughs> yeah, he is he the is. best. Look what he did. Two, three pages. Absolute legend. Two, three pages. Jerry Krause. Organizations win championships. That, Organizations win championships. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> did the Bulls have a championship before Jordan? They didn't. So you the, go, the Bulls only have the six championships. That's right. So you go from... You go from the uh, zero, along with all the rest of the zeros, out of the franchises that have won championships, and then Jerry Krause, and then after Jerry Krause, your third of all the NBA teams, you are the third highest strings. That says something. Are the Bulls the third? Yeah. yeah so Lakers think, are number I think one. Lakers, Lakers, Boston Bulls. I'll pull it up. Well, oh, you pull it up. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull it up. <laughs> I'll pull it up. I'm, I up. think I think that's the order. I can't. I wouldn't think of who's got more. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just a little bit awkward the way I, I thought this was a great setup. I thought it's this fine, was. Just do it quickly. Okay, fill, fill the space. Fill the space. <laughs> I really don't know what to fill it with. Um, yeah. I'll just let you type. I don't know what I'm typing. <laughs> NBA championships. 
Most maybe go like all time franchise. Cause I'm there. Is that it there? Boston. Ah, Golden oh, State. Golden State have just come in. Golden State. Three. Yeah, let me just put my glasses so on so I can see I this. The last time I saw this was before Golden State ever won one years ago. So they were third. Now they're bloody. Yeah. So. Uh, four. But they're tied fourth. They're they're tied with the Bulls. So you've got Boston with Boston's number one. Oh, Boston's one. Seventeen. Boston yeah, is number right. one thanks to that. Bill Russell. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Definitely thanks to him. Yeah. Boston Celtics, 17 championships. Los Angeles Lakers, 16 championships. Golden State Warriors, six. Chicago, six. Spurs, five. We'll stop there. Spurs, five. All in Tim Duncan's. All name. with Tim Duncan. All with Tim <laughs> That's Duncan. That's impressive. Um, but, so, yeah, they're really third because they've never lost in the finals and Golden State have lost five. I reckon that probably puts them above them. But, yeah. That's so you, the wait, you reckon Chicago gets put ahead of Golden State? Yeah, because they're on the same wins. And no, no look, uh, finals appearances for me. So, I mean, they, they won so six. So they, they won 11 total. They, oh, sorry, they went to 11 total. The Golden State Warriors went to 11 finals total. Oh, right. So that's a bit better. So, yeah, so I'm, right. I'm going to give, I'm gonna give them like a nod. It's LeBron. He's been to eight. Well, exactly. He's been to more. Okay, He's let's go there. He hasn't won <laughs> Let's go. Let's let, be waiting to get there. Let, let, let's go there. I, I actually wasn't sure whether we'd be talking about. Um, you sort of have to, don't you? Greatest of all time. But since we're talking about Michael Jordan, mm. we'll go with the goat debate. Okay, we'll go with the goat debate. Yep. We touched on it last time. We did touch on it last time, yeah. and I, I basically said, um, LeBron James is the greatest of all time. And I, I at the time, thought Jordan. I've previously thought LeBron. As you know, because I've, I've been a LeBron diehard for since I was like 10. Yeah, Chris has or been a LeBron diehard fan. He's been the GOAT in his mind for a very long time. Yeah, I said this from long ago, before he even won one championship, I said he was going to be the greatest of all time. I recently changed my mind to Jordan. Now I'm back, he, I'm sort of back on LeBron's side. Oh, you're, you're back with LeBron. I can't decide. Are you back with LeBron After now? our conversation last week. Oh, thank God. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of back on LeBron. And not only that, watching The Last Dance, Jordan had a good fucking team. <laughs> he fucking, you know what I mean? He had a really good team. I don't think LeBron's ever had a team that good to go up against the other team. Well, let's look at what Michael Jordan had. So Michael Jordan had Hall of Famer Skip, Scottie Pippen. Yeah. Hall of Famer Dennis Rodman. Yeah. Okay. He had Hall of Fame coach. Yeah. Pretty sure he's in the Hall of Fame. Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson has to be in the Hall of Fame. He has to be in the Hall of Fame. Is he retired now? No. He's done. He's done. So he'd be in the Hall of Fame. He, he'd be. Uh, he, he, so surely he's got the he wins of all time, doesn't? Yeah, he? surely Phil Jackson is too embarrassed to show his face after the New York Knicks debacle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. So let's just. But but anyway, he, he's a Hall of Famer, Hall yeah. of Fame coach. Yeah. Um, although with that said, Phil Jackson. He's look, probably I, a Hall of Fame. I, I, I don't want. I don't want to get into this debate now because we're talking goat. Yeah. Debate. Bill Jackson overrated. Greg Popovich better. No. Pat Riley's the greatest. <laughs> Pat Riley's the greatest. Pat Riley's good, but Greg Popovich, in my eyes, is the best coach. Greg Popovich is a great coach. I think he could, he could coach any team and they'd be a good team. Well, what did he do with Team USA? I don't know. What did he do? What, what did Team USA do in the last, uh, in the last in the World Cup? Did they win? No, they didn't. didn't they lost to Australia in a friendly, remember? <laughs> I didn't follow did, it at all. You didn't follow it at all. I didn't look at it. Did, did they? You? I don't. I don't. USA didn't medal. Right. They didn't Who medal. Who was in the team? Oh, well, they had Harrison <laughs> Barnes. Oh, oh, that's the big name. Yeah, you they had a super. That is Harrison start. Barnes. Is how you come out. That, they had Whoa. a super. <laughs> how did they not win? They had Barnesy. Yeah. <laughs> Post. This is not even peak anymore. No way. That's the best player they had. I, I'm having a mind, but I can't even think of who was on that team. That's fucked. I can't well, even. Yeah. But, but, but anyway, so again, we we're, we're getting we're getting sidetracked from the go debate. Big jam out of shit. But, but I'm, so I'm, <laughs> if he lost, it's because he had a shit team. Yeah, we know he's a great coach. He is a great coach, a great coach. but I felt like he struggled. I feel like any American coach would struggle at that level. Yeah, he, he needs to have a team that's not just the best team, but is far better than everyone else. Because mm. I think the European coaches are better. Way better because they're even Andre Andre Lamanis, the Australian coach, is way better than 
any of these guys. Yeah. An NBA coach is like a um, an NBA coach is like an English Premier League manager. Mm. Okay, they don't really coach the team. No. They have other coach. They've actually got coaches that coach the team. They just they manage right. the situation. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. NBA coaches, head coaches, are just managers. Yeah. They just they're man managers. They, they manage, manage the group. Coaches. They're like fight for the shirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> fight for the shirt, guys. That, that's the type of coaches they are. Yeah. The real they're guy. Not like, they're not like strategy coaches. Yeah, and like, and that's what I think. Phil Jackson was a great manager. Yeah. Right. I think Phil Jackson was a great manager. I believe the the reason. The real brains behind, well, I, I didn't want to go here. I'd like to do the goat debate, but we'll, we'll go here. We'll go here, okay? Yeah. What is the one common thing other than Phil Jackson with the first Bulls three-peat, the second Bulls three-peat, and the Lakers three-peat? The first, yeah, the, that one Lakers three-peat, 2001, no, 2000, 2001, 2002. What is it? Okay, Phil Jackson's in all those teams. Yeah, right. The one common thing between all of them, Tex Winter. <laughs> Do you know who Tex Winter is? I have no idea who Tex Winter is. You, did you watch The Last Dance? <laughs> oh. Tex no, Winter is when, the master behind the triangle offense. Oh, the tri that's the triangle. He, right. Yeah. Okay. I, I've, I've actually got a book called The Triple Post Offense, which is the triangle offense. Tex Winter. Okay. Written by Tex Winter, signed by Tex Winter. Ooh. And he signs his signature – with a triangle at the end. That's mad. Yeah. That's mad. <laughs> yeah. I, I should have got that out. Oh, get it. No, it's too late. No, it's too late now. It's too late now. Yeah. I'll show it next time. I've got the triple post offense. I'm pretty sure that's what he's called his book, which is the triangle You're an offense. for the triangle. I, I'm not necessarily an advocate for the triangle offense, but that was a big reason why they won. Yeah. Um, and Tex Winter was the brains behind that. Behind all, all of it. Yeah. Tex Winter. Um, so that's why, that's why Phil Jackson was great. Mm. Not only did he have great players, he had Shaquille O'Neal just quickly with the Lakers yeah. during a period where Shaquille O'Neal was absolutely unstoppable and it was unfair. The most dominant it was unfair. Okay. So not only does he have that, but before that he had Michael Jordan. Come on. Yeah. He had a, he had a really good players. He got one. Yeah. He yeah. was very, very that's lucky. That's why his win count's so high. Yeah, exactly. Teams, like. Exactly. And even even if you look at the so he's got nine rings. when the Lakers came back, and um, when the Lakers came back, so Shaq gets traded. We're going way too far out of it now, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, so Shaq gets can't even see <laughs> the goat conversation anymore. Yeah, Shaq Shaq gets. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost touch with the we, we have lost touch. We'll get back to it. Shaq gets traded to the Miami Heat. Yeah. Um yeah, Shaq gets traded to the Miami Heat. Um is Phil Jackson still coaching that Lakers team? No, he retires. He retires. He's out of it. He was at the Australian Open <laughs> during the NBA season one year. I remember seeing it. Right. Okay. Um He didn't want to lose. When does he come back to coach the team? When well, he's got a superstar again. Well, they had Kobe Bryant. Yeah. They, they always had Kobe Bryant. Oh, but was... but he came back and then they went back to back later oh. down the track. Yeah. But he waited. A he he okay. knew they were going to be – you know what I mean? He sort of just picked you know what I mean? picked the good teams. Yeah, they? exactly. That's all right. Exactly. That's what winners do. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, well, you could say that. You could say that. <laughs> He's smart. Um, and, 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 well, again, I, I, what do I, what did I say? I mean, they're, they're not really coaches. They're managers. Yeah. Okay, that's what all NBA coaches pretty much are. Mm. Um, the ones that actually try and coach, David Blatt, get kicked out. <laughs> poor, poor David Blatt. <laughs> poor David Blatt, all right. <laughs> poor David Blatt. He, he's actually he, – he's got – um he's actually got – picked up a disease or something. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. Don't laugh. You were laughing for – I wasn't laughing at you all. Were, I was not laughing. Was... The cameras will prove that. <laughs> you laughed. Picked up a disease. <laughs> he did. Why I'm he's got. I think well, he's got. I, I was trying to figure out how to say it. Poor guy. Oh. He got done dirty. Go to teams coast. It's been in the news. Has he really? He's got. He, did they? Did he get? He he wasn't the Tyron Lue had the the Cleveland ring. He was the one before it. 
that lost to Golden State. Say that again. He lost to Golden State in 2015, didn't he? He he With, he, he was he was the coach. Yep. And then they they fuck him off and get Tyron Lue. And then they, and they won I never championship. Saw any, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't assess the coaching of the game, but yeah. like Tyron Lue seemed clueless. <laughs> he was LeBron's bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Literally LeBron's <laughs> fucking sidekick bitch. Like. David Blatt was probably a good coach. I don't know. And you know the Lakers tried to... If they don't lose Love and Kyrie, they win 2015, undoubtedly, in my opinion. They don't lose against... It's possible. Oh, I think definitely. Certainly possible. Definitely happens. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Okay. I believe you. Yeah. I believe you. Fuck. Come on. It happens. And then they get Tyron Lue, they win, which was... That had nothing to do with him anyway. That was LeBron James. All LeBron James. But poor bloody. Here we go. Oh, MS. That's rough. Yeah. Fuck. So he's, he doesn't coach anymore. Yeah, you wouldn't expect He's pretty much done. Exactly. So he, he was actually, you know who he was coaching when he made the announcement that he had MS? Who? Olympiakos. Oh, damn it. He was coaching Olympiakos. He's the best team of all time. Most storied franchise ever. What, well, they, well, let me tell you. <laughs> no story, they won back to back Euroleague titles, which is very difficult to do. Very difficult yeah. to do. People don't win back to back Euroleague easily. But look, people not... shrug off Euro basketball. I've, I know I've never followed it much, but it gets shrugged off compared to the NBA. It does. It's probably really good basketball. It's I've great basketball. It it's great basketball. Yeah. Vasilis Spinolis. Okay. Goat. The, the Olympic. The real goat. The real goat. The real goat. <laughs> <laughs> Spinulis is the real goat. Yeah. Okay, he was part of that back-to-back championship Euroleague team with the Olympiakos when he was in the NBA. So he briefly went to the NBA um, and didn't get a fair, mm. fair run As by Jeff Van Gundy. So often we see Greeks and not getting a fair run. Yeah, exactly. Only breakthrough anyway. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Van Gundy was coaching the Houston Rockets. Spinulis was at the Rockets. Tracy McGrady, the most talented player of all time. We talked about that. We'll, we'll talk about that later yeah. when we go back to the GOAT debate. Yeah, because I'll find that interesting. Um, we'll go back to that. Spinulis was at the Houston Rockets with McGrady, Jeff Van Gundy, the coach. And Jeff Van Gundy basically wanted Spinulis to sit in the corner and shoot threes, right. which isn't his game. He can shoot threes. Jeff Van Gundy. That's what Jeff Van Gundy wanted to the do. The commentator. He's a commentator now, yeah. I hate that guy with a passion. Why? His voice is the most annoying voice I've ever heard in my life. He's a pest. He's a weasel. I hate him. He's actually a really loved guy. I hate him. I can't stand yeah. his voice. All the shit he says. The Spinellas thing really pissed me off. But anyway, <laughs> I'll just get into that. So he he wanted Spinellas to sit in the corner and shoot threes. That was his job. Yeah. Okay. And Spinellas says, so Spinellas says, Tim, in Europe, I'm T Mac. That's what Spinola says to Jeff Van Gundy. Guess what Jeff Van Gundy says back? Well, here, T-Mac is T-Mac. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. That's a good one. Yeah, like- that was it. So Sp- Spinola goes back to Greece, joins Olympiakos, and the rest is history. Right. Didn't like the NBA. The rest didn't, is history. Didn't get it right. There's, there's a lot run. of players that that happens to. Juan Carlos Navarro. Um do you know who Juan Carlos Navarro is? Barcelona legend, okay? He goes to the NBA with the Memphis Grizzlies, breaks the record, the then record, has been broken since, I think by Steph Curry. Yeah, right. Someone's broken it. But Juan Carlos Navarro goes to uh, Memphis Grizzlies, breaks the record for three-pointers made by a rookie, averages, I think, 10, 11 points a game, mm-hmm. and decides, nah, this isn't for me, goes back to Europe. Fuck, that's not bad, 10, 11 a game. 10, yeah. 10, 11 points a game, and, and at the time, makes the record for three-pointers made for by a rookie. rookie. Yeah. Far okay, for that time. It, it's since been broken. And then decides, no, this isn't for me. I'm going to go he back to Barcelona. He not the money in, in the NBA that he was in Europe either, though. Well, Which did you see what Tony money. Kukoc said in the documentary? Did you see that? Yeah, he said he stayed over there because he wouldn't be getting that money. Yeah, he said, yeah, he was getting paid more in Europe. Yeah. By millions, he said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, now, he now, said not even just by one or two million. Yeah. But like a fair bit. Yeah. So I, I'm not. I'm not saying in Europe you get paid better. That's not true. No, but like. Um, but there, there are cases where you do get more. Um, but yeah, Theo Papalukas. Remember Theo Papalukas? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember him. Who's that? 
Cheska Moscow legend, and then and then Olympiakos legend. <laughs> well, anyway, he was a six foot seven Greek point guard. Oh, yeah. He was a part of the um, Eurobasket champion team in 2005 and was part of the Greek team in the 2006 World Cup, hmm. which beat the USA. Oh, right. Okay. I should remember him then. Yeah, oh, he's, very young. he's a legend. Six, seven point guard. Anyway, he was offered a contract at Miami Heat mm. for four or five million a season. And he was like, He's like, I'm 30 now. I'm getting off of the same with Olympiakos. Yeah. That's where I'm from. <laughs> you guys play 82 game seasons. They play 30. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest thing I've yeah, ever heard. I'm, going, I'm, I'm staying in Greece. Yeah. I'm playing, for, I'm playing for Olympiakos. Because, it, yeah, actually, it's, it's interesting. Like, you play 82. Per, right? per, if you were to look at um, money per hour, Okay, maybe not since the new – like, you know how yeah, players are getting paid yeah. a, a lot now and no, it's been happening right. for maybe like five years or so. And the games they play. But before the recent – yeah, before the recent salary cap changes and those salaries skyrocketing, per hour, EuroLeague stars got paid more. Yeah. Per hour. Yeah. Way more, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Way more. Um, but anyway, let's wind back. We'll go back to the GOAT debate, okay? Yeah, so we're talking – we we're talking Michael Jordan, LeBron James, okay? And I mentioned during this whole little offshoot of talk that we just had. Tangent. Yeah, the tangent <laughs> we just went on, um, that T-Mac was the most talented. So yeah. I'll start there. Let's get that out. And then we'll talk about yeah. the, the proper guys, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay? So when we talk about greatest of all time, you know, we don't just look at championships. We don't just look at the numbers that they put up and just the actual – vision of what you're seeing, mm. okay? But you have to look at the full body of work. Yeah. I said that a lot last yeah, time. Body, body of, work. of work. I had nightmares about yeah. that. Yeah, you got to have <laughs> the body of work. The body of work, okay? <laughs> Tracy McGrady doesn't have the body of work. No. Okay, but talent he did, maybe he's the guy. <laughs> well, if, if, yeah, if he was healthy his whole career, yeah. maybe he is, yeah. okay? According to you. But the the... the the, the best argument you can make for him being the most talented is the 2002-2003 NBA season, Tracy McGrady, Orlando Magic, team of scrubs, team of absolute scrubs, guys that didn't even last long might, in the league. I might have known Sean Kemp on there, but he was like Oh, yeah. Old. It was like Sean Kemp's last season in the yeah, league. Yeah, okay. That's the only one I think I've Yeah, done. so it was a, a, a post-obese Sean Kemp. <laughs> He had slightly trimmed down, but he wasn't wasn't good. Oh, so so if, if you don't know, between when he, so he's when he left Seattle and joined Cleveland, he started to put on a bit of weight. Yeah. And then when he left Cleveland, joined Portland, I don't know if it had anything to do with that NBA lockout, but he put on a lot of weight. Jesus. A that lot of weight. Well, well, look, like let's just quickly long. look at the Sean Kemp. <laughs> a post obese. All over the shop. What a beast. Okay. Yeah. Sean Kemp for the Seattle Sonics. Big in guy. his prime. Okay. In his prime. Very talented player. Mm. None of these photos do it justice, yeah. but he see, he, I can see he the, was fat. Arm in that one. Go, go to the one where his hands are up. Yeah. <laughs> He's got some size. Yeah. He's got some kilos on him there. Holy shit. And that's after he's trimmed. No, this, is, this is when he put on weight. Oh, so so he, he went to Portland and got fat and then was never the same oh, as Sean Kemp. That's at least 20 kilos. Sure. And then he went to the Magic. So, so he, he actually trimmed down here. Yeah. Maybe can't tell, but you can just look at his... He looks the same as what you just showed me, but that sort of tells me that the other photo didn't do it justice, the Portland one. But so if that's his size, yeah, I can imagine. Sean Kemp is an absolute legend. Full respect for the guy. But look at that face. <laughs> He's done. 
<laughs> He's done. That photo would have been taken. That photo would have. That photo would have been taken yeah. before the season even started. He was already done. He was done. <laughs> Hates it. Okay. <laughs> Hates it. Oh, far out. Yeah. Done. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Look at anyway, how did we get on to Sean Camp? Because he was the only. Oh yeah, he was on the Orlando Tracy Magic two thousand two two thousand three team. Yeah. So and he was the only guy that you knew, but you should have known Drew Gooden because he was part of the Cleveland Cavaliers, yeah. LeBron James team. Like, I told you I didn't follow it until the season. Oh, until after. Money, yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, so Tracy McGrady took a team of scrubs to the playoffs. Yeah. Okay. The second best player on that team was a rookie, Drew Gooden. A rookie, Drew Gooden. Daryl Armstrong was a backup point guard. Another. Standout player. Who else was on that team? Gordon Giracek. You have scrubbed up on this team list. <laughs> this is my prime of basketball years. Oh, so you've just got all the knowledge. Just I, I, I remember this team. Andrew de Klerk. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrew. Gerald Sasser. Gerald Sasser. These, these are guys that didn't do yeah. really anything. Okay. I think, did, didn't I show you that? Yeah, Did I show that Andrew I went through all the I'm going to get it up. I'm going to get it up. Trash. D- Andrew Some De- of them averaged like three points for the fucking. Well, I mean, Andrew DeClerc, who you just laughed at, I'm pretty sure, I'm going to get it up now. Pretty sure he started playoff games for the <laughs> Orlando so. Magic that year. Yeah. Gee, sorry. No, oh, I don't want to. Feel free to yeah, yeah. keep talking. No, I am. Make no, noise. I will keep talking. No, but I, I mean, T Mac. You know he's good. 30 points. Ah, 13 points, 30 seconds. Crazy. So the team team goes... the the Orlando doesn't break through to uh, anywhere near the go conversation because another one one like like that, Alan Iverson. So talented. Really talented. Alan Iverson does have a body of work, though. Yeah, but talented, but he just didn't have a good run. He never got a championship. Did he get a championship? No. No, he never got a championship. Yeah. He did he just, go to the like, 2001 well, you finals. You everything into consideration. Yeah, well, what, what did he... He just didn't have the accolades. They the faced, he faced Shaquille O'Neal in the 2001 finals. <laughs> what do you want? What do you do? Although, if you, if you ever get a chance, game one of those 2001 finals, mm. the only game the Sixers win yeah. in that series because they lose 4-1, uh, Alan Iverson goes completely off. And, and he does the step over Tyron oh, Lue. Someone said... Oh, yeah. someone that, that's said, that game. Thank, I think Kobe might have said, oh, someone said it. We should all be luck, uh, like, we should all be thankful Alan Iverson wasn't 6'5. Because, <laughs> a different story, probably, if he's that tall. He's like that short and still that much of a beast. Okay, Andrew DeClerc, do you see the stats? Yeah. 14 minutes. Andrew DeClerc, 15 minutes per game, but starts six of the seven playoff games. Andrew DeClerc. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew DeClerc. You know what? I'll just put my glasses on. Okay, so here you go. <laughs> I mean, just take a look at that. Drew Drew Gooden, Daryl Armstrong, Gordon Giracek, Pat Garrity. The, Dude. These are the Dude. Jacques Vaughn. Tracy McGrady didn't sit down. 44 minutes played. Well, 48 minutes is the full length of a game. I know. Four minutes so he off. he did sit. He did sit. Yeah, barely. That's how, that's how much that team relied. But he took that team He took that team to the playoffs. He took that lineup to the playoffs. The fact that he took that team to the playoffs is, is pretty good on him. But here's where it gets crazy. Here's where it gets crazy, Chris. Mm. They were playing the Detroit Pistons. Yeah. The Detroit Pistons were a year away from winning a championship. They won 2004. Mm. Okay, and then they went to the finals again in 2005 but faced the Spurs and it was all over. Right. But in 2003, they were still a good team. They went to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. Okay. The Orlando Magic took them to seven games. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. He took them to seven games. Tracy he, McGrady took them to seven games pretty much. Tracy McGrady took them to seven games. And Tracy McGrady had the, the famous comment mm. in the press conference. He got the Orlando Magic up 3-1 in that series. What? Really? Orlando was up 3-1 this in that series. In the conference finals? Or against, no, this is the first round. Oh, first round. First round. Yeah. Detroit, Detroit Pistons, who end up winning a championship the next year, are facing a lower seed Orlando Magic with a bunch of scrubs plus Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady takes them to seven games. And not only that, they were up, they were up 3-1, and Tracy McGrady, because every year up until that point was best of five in the first round. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. 
This was the first year first of best of seven. seven. Right, so he would have won. He had it stayed best of five. He said at the in the press conference when they got up three one, it's good to be in the second round. I'm pretty sure he said it as a joke and not because he actually thought, yeah. you know, we're in yeah. the second round. But he said it's good to be in the second round, and then they end up losing. That sucks. And Tracy McGrady is up on the at the press conference, and. He whispers to himself as there he's getting peppered with questions. I can't do this. And he looks up and then he cries and walks off. <laughs> Wait, so Tracy McGrady. When? At the, at the press conference when they, when, when they lost. So they're up 3-1. Yeah. He says it's good to be in the second round. Yeah. Prematurely he says that because they end up losing 4-3. And at the end of that seventh game in the press conference, yeah. he's getting peppered with questions. And he says, I can't do this. <laughs> and he looks up and he cries and walks off. <laughs> He 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 did everything that he could, oh, everything God. that he could. And let me just show you his stats, not for that playoff series, which is probably pretty pretty good. They are pretty good. Yeah, they're unreal. But let's just look at what he did for that that season. Okay, I'm going to round up just yeah. to give us nice whole numbers. <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to put my glasses on so I can read this. 32 points per game, six assists, seven rebounds, two steals, and a block. Mm. Okay, and he does that on 46% field goal. Not bad. 39% from three. And that's in an NBA where only four teams averaged over 100 points per game. It's not the same NBA yeah, as now. Yeah, we've talked about that. It's way – it means a lot more than Harden's 32 points or whatever. Wouldn't well, it? yeah, Harden's 35 yeah. or yeah. whatever he was it's averaging so far. far. Especially especially Harden because he shoots that many 33s. Yeah. Like, his points, to me, don't even count half the time. Exactly. The amount of fouls he draws is ridiculous. So not well, fun to watch. It, it is a good thing though that he can do has the ability to do that. Yeah, but in in today's I'm not NBA, saying, like that's a, his skill, that's his thing. Like great, they, they're going to keep failing you. You're but not good to failure. watch. Sucks to watch. Yeah, sucks to watch. Sort of makes me hate him because it's like, I don't. To me, he's not playing the game the right way. But it's not his fault. If he can get away with it, he's going to. You know what I mean? Yeah, fair enough. Well, that's exactly right. And there's nothing you can really do to stop it. They're not going to make a rule where those aren't fouls anymore. You know what I mean? So well, yeah. you have to adapt to the way you Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, Tracy McGrady, talented, most talented player. Mm. And I just pull up his 2002-2003 season because that's him in his prime. That's probably his best season in the league. So that's why I pull that one up. Okay, now let's talk about the real, the real GOAT debate. Yeah. Okay, Spinolis, Nikos Gullis. Who is it? It's got to be Spinolis. And no one else is in this conversation, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even think about the words Jordan or Jack. Yeah. <laughs> and not in the fucking conversation. Nah, real talk. Okay, real, real talk. Yeah. Nickel Skulls. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, look, so just so everyone knows at home, Nikos Gullis, uh, Greek legend. He actually was born in America, uh, grew up, I think he was born in New Jersey. Ended up moving to Greece. Mm. Um, so actually, let me go back. But he's Greek, obviously, because his name's. He's Greek. He, his his parents were Greek. Yeah. Okay. And Gullis was short, and it was something else. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Yeah, it was something else. But but Nick, and he was known as Nick Gullis. Yeah. In in America. USA, and then he goes to Greece, and he's Nikos. He's up the extra syllable. Yeah. Naturally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so Nikos Gullis. He, he actually was third in the nation in scoring. Mm. This is in college. Yeah. 27 points per game. Is he college in America? This is college in America. Wow. Okay, he has, rec he has records at Wake Forest. Mm. Anyway, he gets – he has a, an agent. So he shares an agent with Diana Ross. Right. Okay, Diana Ross has just started her solo career and is becoming a superstar. The agent neglects Nikos – and takes care of Diana Ross, okay? And this is back before scouting was what it is. Could have maybe, okay? could have maybe pushed him instead of him leaving to Greece. Well, 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 wait. 
He, get, he does get drafted. Oh, okay. He gets drafted by the Celtics, but very, very late. Very late. Mm. Okay? So, so late that it's not worth investing in him if he gets injured. Just right. let him go. And that's right. what happened. Right. He got injured. He got let go. Red Auerbach, who's another NBA executive uh, legend, okay, says it's one of his biggest regrets. Mm. He actually said that. Really? Yep. He go. said that. He said, I, I can pull the quote up, but I'm not going to bother. <laughs> take my word for it. Yeah, you, Google it if you want. It, 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 it's true. Yeah. Red Auerbach's greatest mistake. Yeah. Well, one of his biggest regrets. So anyway, he goes to Grace and scores like 44, 40 points per game. His team goes on. I think his team had, he played for Artis Thessaloniki and they, um, they went undefeated in Greece for like four or five years. So what started as a joke, I'm going to have to back my countrymen here. We should probably, yeah. if things went a bit different for him, we might be talking about him in the go conversation. Well, well, just so you know, James, so when we talk NBA Hall of Fame, we really mean the James Naismith Memorial Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. Nico Scalis is in it. <laughs> Did you see he, he wore a white blazer? Oof. And did a speech just a couple of years ago. No, I didn't see. Gotta got to look it up. Got to look it up. Nikos yeah. Kalis. <laughs> and he has a speech about, um, he, in his speech, he has like a don't do drugs kind of thing. Stop. He did not. He did. <laughs> he did. What a funny guy. So anyway, Nikos Kalis, so he was an absolute legend, goes all throughout his, wait until you hear how he retired, okay? Mm -hmm. So by this stage in his career, he's with Panathinaikos because they're a big money club and they would have bought him. And it's right at the end of his career. He's still one of the best. He's still a good player, not one of them. Yeah. No, he's still one of the best. He's still one of the best players. Right. Um, but the coach decides, today you're going to come off the bench. Right. So guess what Nikos does? What? Leaves the stadium never to return again. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he retired. <laughs> That's how he, he retires. Oh my god! That's how he retires. That is the best. Yeah, <laughs> that is the best. What a legend! He is a legend. What a legend! Oh. He leaves the stadium and never comes. Look, back. look, I could, I could talk about this guy for a lot. Yeah. He also, he was the one that carried the torch in the 2004 Olympics into the stadium yeah. at the opening ceremony. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and he's, a, he, he basically put Greece on the map in '87 when they won the mm. EuroBasket. Before then, no one – we were basically – people would have – What was his career year to year? How long was he playing? Uh, I was 79 or so 78 till old. 93 or something. Yeah, right. 92, 93. He's an old – is he still alive? He's still alive. He did, yeah. he did a speech in the oh, Hall of Fame not that long ago. Oh, thank God he's old. He was – started his career 79. He was already – What's not that old? I mean, Julius Irving's still kicking. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of those. Old, Bill, Bill Russell's still kicking. He played like Bill in the Russell's 60s. Right. He's a skeleton. He might have even scraped Skin, the 50s. 59 maybe he played. <laughs> no, he's still doing good and laughing. <laughs> You've seen his laugh, right? No. You haven't seen Bill Russell's laugh? No. He has that real old man laugh. you got to look it up. <laughs> I'll look it up. you got to look it up. you got to look it up. Add it to the list. Oh, right, let's get down. to the goat combo. Just, just wait. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> just wait. Tell me. Again, Nicholas Gullis. And I was just saying, he put Greece on the map. Before him, no one really took much notice of Greece. Yeah. Right. Okay. When he they won the Euro basket, people took notice. Oh, there's a Parthenon. Oh, there's a Necropolis. <laughs> okay. You guys invented the alphabet. That's when they discovered <laughs> all of that. Everything. That's when they discovered all that. They didn't know about that beforehand. Yeah. When Nikos Kalis won the Euro basket for Greece in '87, people were like, oh. Americans, so you guys have been here for a while Americans doing some stuff. Still don't know. <laughs> Americans don't even know we exist. No, oh, don't even talk about Americans. <laughs> the worst. Don't even talk about the them. Place on earth. I never want to go there. Too ignorant. Really? Too ignorant. Oh. Yeah, look, I, I was in the same boat as that, but I really want to see Miami. I know you want to see your man Donald Trump, the Don. <laughs> That's what the well, first who, place you want. Wait a sec. Why, why is he my man? <laughs> why, why is he my man? Why is he your man? <laughs> He's on the back of your job. Oh, oh, please. Oh, please. <laughs> Classic. Anyway. Anyway. Um, proper goat debate now. 
Trump. Nico Scullis. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, LeBron, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> LeBron James, Michael Jordan. Forget about Kobe Bryant. He's not even in the conversation. Yeah. Um, good player, but. Rest in peace. Nowhere near. Nowhere Rest near. Um, look, in the, in the record books, what's Kobe Bryant? Kobe Bryant is on the same par as a Clyde Drexler. He's definitely not in the game. Okay. Though. Clyde Drexel, a great his, player. His death definitely accelerated his legacy a lot. But definitely. People started saying, people people that are like respected in the NBA and analytics community, like the people that are always talking about the goats, that were always talking about LeBron and Jordan, started saying that Kobe was the goat. And I just shook my head. I was like, he's a fucking. Well, he's probably the Lakers goat. He's a sheep. Yeah, right now maybe he's the Lakers guy. Yeah, maybe he's the Lakers guy. What he's done at the Lakers. That's if you can go past. Now that LeBron's in the Lakers, if you're just thinking overall players with the Lakers, LeBron, LeBron is now the Lakers guy. Oh, no, no, but no. But he hasn't played there. Body of work. Body of work. But yeah, no, nah, but he's definitely not in the guy conversation for me. Kobe. Yeah. As much as I love him. Well, well I, that, that was. His last game, I cried real tears. I don't know how I slipped up then and said Kobe Bryant. I don't know how that even came in. Yeah. We weren't supposed to be talking maybe about Kobe. Is something you want to tell no, there's nothing. No, I'm not. A, I don't. You're a secret bright. No, nah, I'm not. Advocate. Look, Kobe's a great player. Yeah. No Terrible what happened. Um, and it's going to be great to see him get inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. Yeah. Well, if it goes ahead. Well, we'll see what happens. Does, yeah. yeah, we'll see what happens. COVID 19. Fuck COVID 19. Yeah, language. No, I'm kidding. You can say what you want. Doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> Let's not do that. Yeah. <laughs> No, you can say what you want. Yeah. But, yeah, proper debate. Uh, Michael Jordan, LeBron James. Michael Jordan, obviously, we all know what he did. Great player, six championships. Mm. Defensive player of the year, we one year. Know what he did. Yeah, defensive player of the year, MVP. You know, he's done everything. Yeah. Okay, LeBron James. Let's let's, let's fight his cause. Yeah. Because no one fights his cause. Yeah. No one enough. No, does no. it enough anyway. 100%. LeBron James has been screwed over by COVID-19. Oh, has been screwed. Time. Has been screwed over by the, the be lockout. More frustrated about that. Yeah, fucking bullshit. Sorry. Possible championship this year. We'll see. It still like, might go ahead. Likely a championship, I think. But the the thing that hurts hurts it for me. Okay, is I want to see history. I would love to see someone take Kareem Abdul Jabbar's all time points yeah. in the NBA also record. COVID nineteen. What's that? That's also been. Bit screwed up by COVID-19. Exactly. I mean, he could have scored another 500 points this year. Yeah. That's valuable. Yeah, 100%. That's valuable for this. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll get the numbers up. If LeBron James what? gets... If LeBron James is... <laughs> Sorry, I should... If, Le <laughs> if LeBron James is the all-time leading scorer, very hard, very hard case to make that he's not the GOAT, given everything else. He's already right, right there in that conversation. A lot of people think he is. If he takes that accolade of first all-time scoring points, I, I don't know. For me, it's a no-brainer. He's not that far off. I don't know if he makes 4,000. He's 4,000, exactly 4,000 points below. He could have done it, though. He'll take Malone, for sure. I don't know if he takes Kareem anymore. Well, if you, if you look, at, look at it like this. So, the lockout... He he's played through a lockout, mm. so they they had they had a short they had a shortened season. There's valuable points yeah, there. They played sixty games. Or they played like sixty six games. Um, so that's short of eighty two, obviously. Yeah. And now you've got COVID nineteen that's just shortened this season. That's another five hundred. That's five hundred points right there. Okay, let's say two hundred points. Is that is that, is that am I giving him too many for the lockout? Sixty sixty six. Am I? <sighs> Is 200 too many or too little? 20, 20 games, 20. That's probably perfect. Okay. No, I'd say I'd say 300 points. Okay, eight, let's add He'll be eight. scoring 25 at least. So so LeBron James is 4,000 points short of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. Plenty of years. Well, Did hopefully. Did Kareem play through a lockout or anything, but No. No. He didn't play through any lockouts. So LeBron James, and, and he was a bit, a bit of an Iron Man mm. in terms of injuries. Yeah. Um, so is so LeBron, LeBron James. So is LeBron. But LeBron James could get that 4,000. I, I still think he can do it. 
Hopefully. And if LeBron, it depends well, this, how long he goes for. He's still got at least another five years. For people, for people that are crazy about LeBron being the greatest of all time, if he gets that all-time points, I again, like you said, you said it before. Yeah, that puts that that. There's no that argument. That blows it out of the park. Yeah, I mean, nine, nine finals appearances, eight straight, eight yeah. of those straight, three championships, possibly another one with the Lakers. It's going to happen. Oh, fucking it better. It would have happened this year, I reckon. Really it still could happen this year. We'll, we'll see what be, happens. Oh, fuck. I don't know if America's going anywhere with COVID-19. I think they're just going to be gonna like, screw worse, it, let's man. just do it. You reckon just herd immunity? Wait, wait, herd immunity. Herd immunity. Herd immunity. And a fuckload of death. Well, let, let, me, give, let me give you a statistic. <laughs> yeah. Let me give you a statistic. In, in, let me hit you with some knowledge. Yeah, let me hit oh. you with some knowledge. <laughs> okay? Wow. Um Dodgeball. Yeah. Ben Stiller. What was his character White called? Goodman. White Goodman. White Goodman. That's the real goat. Yeah. <laughs> the goat of all ball sports. Fucking Chuck Norris. <laughs> I read it. Yeah. In a book. I fucking <laughs> love that movie. He's the best character, man. He's such a good actor. Have you ever man. seen the, sh the, the movie Heavyweights? No. So it's basically... So Ben Stiller played a character like White Goodman in that movie. Oh, it's God, before Ben Stiller that. was really big. Yeah, I've got to watch that. Heavyweights. So it, it's basically kids at a fat camp. Yeah, right. And and he's running the fat camp and. Oh yes, I'm gonna watch that. Yeah, you, you, you gotta watch it. Um, anyway, what was I going? What was I saying? Um, what were you saying? Oh, the stat about herd immunity. Oh yeah, herd immunity. Yeah. So, and this is real, mm. but I'm about to t what I'm about to tell you. And, and again, this is not me saying COVID nineteen is nothing. Yeah, it's just another flu. Yeah. It's not me saying any of that. I'm just going to give it's you a not. number. You can make of it as you will. Okay. In a bad flu season, so the U.S. went through a bad flu season in the seventeen eighteen period. Right. Yeah, 2017. the seventeen eighteen flu season was bad for the okay. U.S. 79,000 people in the U.S. died. In the one year? In the one year. Bullshit. Yeah. Right. You know how many people have died of coronavirus in the about U.S.? 65? Six, about, yeah, 68,000. Yeah. It's not over. It isn't over. It'll double. It isn't over. And, and, and they didn't have restrictions in 1718, so they probably could have even brought that down. Yeah. yeah but they still, could have if they still 79,000 people die, died mm -hmm. in the U.S. in the 1718. Say winter season from yeah, just the regular from, flu. From flu. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's just the way that this thing spreads, that number is so low because of the restrictions. restrictions. Yeah, and if we hadn't put any restrictions, it would be double. You'd have a million. People Could be triple. Dead. You'd have a million people dead in the U.S. Maybe not just in the U.S. Overall. Yeah, okay. I don't know how many have died overall. Like it's like two hundred something. Yeah, two hundred something thousand. Fucking really close. Leading the way. That, like they're gonna take. They're leading they're gonna have the way. Deaths in the rest of the world combined soon. If they don't, if they open up again, like people are saying. Yeah. But yeah, the way it spreads, man, something not right about it, and I'm fucking. I don't want to say anything, but yeah. it was made in a lab. <laughs> I'm telling <laughs> yeah. you, it was made in the lab, bro. It, the way it like survives on I, 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 and it stuff. wasn't made. I don't believe it was it made was in a lab. Modified in a lab. It wasn't modified. It's it wasn't made. I don't believe it. I don't believe it's a you weapon. You think it came from eating that weird animal? No, no, no. That little the fucking armadillo. Pang <laughs> pangolin is that what it's called? A yeah, pangolin. I think so, first of all, what are they doing eating that? That's disgusting. <laughs> that's another talk. You, you know, <laughs> you know, when when Tom Steer sits in that seat. <laughs> Okay, we'll talk about why the Chinese eat that stuff. He's actually pretty good on it all. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. He's pretty good on that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, again, I'm not saying open it up. Yeah. It's just a it's just a flu. I'm not saying that. Yeah. I just want to make that 100% clear. Yeah. All, all no, I, I know what you're saying. I, I, just, I just wanted to throw that number out there. 79,000 people died in the U.S. Yeah. Okay. In the 17, 18 that does season. That surprise me. I knew. Okay. But, yeah, like I said, that's – you know, this number would be so much higher without the restrictions. They've been in isolation for like over a month. They went in it way before we did. A week yeah, but we how did. much are they sticking to it? Oh, probably not that much. I, I, don't, I, I don't saw think... a bloody thing of the beach the other day in California, maybe. Bloody packed. 
Yeah, well, there you go. Absolutely and packed. In Michigan, they're protesting the restrictions. Yeah. I saw... Did you see that? Can I get it up? Oh, I, we what is it? Watch the whole thing. It's the... Must be like the health minister or something. Whatever they do over there. I don't know how their politics works and that. But it, it's someone very important. Probably the guy like on the board that makes the decisions or what they're doing yeah. in the lockdown and that. And just one really dumb reporter who's saying, like, is it not our right to work if we're running out of money? And he pretty much is going, is it not my right to be alive? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, well, people are running out of money. He goes, yeah, you'll get your, you'll get your check. It's just there's like a two-day lag. And she's like, oh, well, you know, some people can't wait, whatever. He goes, go get a job. Go get a job as an essential worker then. If you really need a job, go work as an essential worker. There's plenty of work still as a central worker. Mm. And anyway, his general gist is they all want to open up, but like they're all saying about their own personal rights. We need yeah. to work, whatever. It's against the constitution. Yeah, but like his <laughs> point is you're so ignorant. If you work, people die. You know what I mean? Yeah. If we open up, many people die. So that's 65,000, which is already way too high. That, that, yeah, who knows what that could be? 200? Yeah, three hundred in a matter of two weeks. Well, well you know, weeks. talk talking about because uh, the more it grows, the more it spreads. Like it's so exponential. It's th th this might, this might. Um, Scott Morrison said it best. Mm. He he was like, um, "There's lives at stake on both sides." Yeah, there's lives at stake. There's two crises. He yeah. said, "There's a health crisis and there's an economic crisis." Yeah, and he's like, "There's lives at stake both sides." So they've got to get the right balance. Yeah, yeah, um, that's true. So, again, is opening up in the U.S. the right thing to do? Who knows? Give it a shot if you want. That, that's that, that's well, basically I'm basically all I'm, I'm over here. So I don't yeah, me. exactly. I couldn't care less yeah. what they were doing. I couldn't care less. Um, in fact, well, actually, you know what? We do care because we want to see an NBA season. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> open up, open up, go for your. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, we want to see an NBA season. So who knows? Yeah, who knows what's going to happen? Great, wouldn't it? Who knows what's going to happen? But they probably wouldn't have fans in the crowds. But yeah. If they were playing, it'd be good. Yeah. Yeah, it would be with no fans. Yeah, of course. It'd be with no fans. God, but they can just play. They're, now their testing is, I think I read somewhere that testing can show within like an hour or two now. Oh, really? They could test before every game. Have you seen people getting tested? Oh, <laughs> yeah, my mate had to get tested. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it felt like there was a knife going into my brain. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's what he said. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I know someone that got tested. I've had that done once before, years ago, when I was sick. Just shoved that swab right up your nose. Oh god! It's fucking! I was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> right up there. Right? <laughs> it was crazy. But, well, I know someone that got tested, and he said he he said his nose was bleeding afterwards. Oh yeah. Um, but but he said it felt like he was he was like it felt like they touched my eyeball. <laughs> they probably did. <laughs> They fucking it. didn't go. It didn't go just past it. It's yeah, they probably they probably did. Who yeah. knows? No, they probably did. Oh no. man. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. God, anyway. We are, gee, we are on the tangents tonight. Back to the goat Back to debate. The goat combo. Back to the goat debate. I don't know where we got up to, but LeBron James. Yeah. <laughs> LeBron. The mic might not have picked that up, and you just made a big scene out of it. Now. <laughs> Just wanted to get it out there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, <clears throat> Le <laughs> LeBron, LeBron James, if he gets that all-time scoring record. Definitely um, for me. It's not a debate. For sure. It's not a debate. He, he's done enough. He's done enough. And he's going to win another championship. If We're hoping one, they open up. One more championship. That's enough for me. That's to solidify it in my head. He doesn't need that. He doesn't need that point thing. He's already beat Jordan in points. I know he's played more seasons, but he's two thousand points ahead. So, well, the thing, the thing is, like, I'm not talking about for what solidifies it for you or what solidifies it for me. Him being the goat. But for for me, he's already. Though. For me, he's he's already the goat. Yeah, I'm so, on the fence. He's so subjective, but because he, mate, that guy could get ten rings and fight fifty thousand points, and people would still say Jordan's the goat. They really would. I don't think they would. They really would. 50,000 points. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? They just, some people just don't yeah, really there would want be. to there entertain the idea. Well, I mean, there are still people that say Bill Russell's the GOAT. Oh, there are people. Give me a break. One of the ones. <laughs> yeah. Give me a break. Yeah. 
Seriously? That's what? disrespectful to Michael Jordan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> disrespectful. Well, what, one of the things is uh, Oscar Robertson. Have you even heard of him? Yeah, I have. Didn't okay. he used to get a lot of triple doubles? No? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. Well, back then it was very I, easy. To I wasn't I wasn't sure you would know who no, he is. Yeah. But yeah, he's, he's an absolute legend of the game. But well, what era was that? He would have played Oscar Robertson would have been 70s, 60s Why was going he on so 70s. Many triple doubles back then. Was there some rule where it made it a lot easier on I, don't no, know. I think he was probably just athletic. It's just crazy. There wasn't cuz this guy this guy when Westbrook started getting all those records, his name was always next to Oscar Robertson. So that's like why that's how you up saw to it. Oscar yeah. Robertson on all these different Yeah. Sort of, yeah. So I thought this guy was doing it back then that's fucking crazy. Just a real athletic, just like I think. I think he was just really athletic, and there were a bunch of unathletic white guys in the league at the time. That's that's what my theory is. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Yeah, could be wrong. I think you're right. Um, But (laughs) but I think I think I am right. Yeah, I think I am right. But but I'm I'm not talking about what solidifies it for us. I'm talking about what would solidify it for just the everyday Joe Blow basketball fan. And if he's the all-time leader in points. Oh, yeah, and he's already it neck and neck at the time. moment. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it makes it very And hard. he's, again, if they How open up. How many seasons did Kareem play? Kareem played a lot. Like 20? Kareem played for a long time. Mm. Kareem played for a very long time. Oh, my God. Oh. That's a big list. 20 seasons. Yeah, right. 20, 20 seasons. So he played for the Bucks. LeBron will get 20 easily because he's not going to retire in three years. He's already on his 17th. Well, I mean, uh, isn't his goal – well, people say this is his goal, whether it actually is or not. I don't know if he's actually said anything. His but, goal to finish in LA? Or? No, to play with Bronny James. Is it his goal? I think that's just been speculation. Well, that, that would be fucking cool. That would be so good. That would be mad. Y- you know what would be cooler? But So them being on the same team, yeah, great. Yeah. Them playing against, against each, each other. other. Yeah. That would be good. That's what I would prefer to see. That would be I good. I care for seeing them together. That would be good. That would be awesome. Um, so, yeah, LeBron James, if if that's his goal, he's It'll smashing the all-time. He's smashing Kareem with George yeah. in the all-time points. The thing is, as well, he's so – and with the GOAT combo, and like you said, you got to take all the things into account, body of work, everything, longevity, the body. This man is just so gifted naturally. Like, he's a freak of nature. To be the, to do some of the things he does at that age still he's not that old yet, but like he'll be doing them still. He's getting old. Yeah, no, he's getting like he's like thirty five. But I mean, the, the shit he's doing, some of the dunks he's still throwing down and everything. I think he's thirty five now. Yeah, thirty five this year, thirty six in December. Thirty six in December. So he'll turn thirty six during next season. Yeah, I think he's there going you go. on like. What is it? Yeah, December 3rd. Can he score 4,000 points? Well, look at him. He's a beast. He has to put in at least four seasons. Yeah. And in... 40 years old. And this is what I want to see. See, this is... This when is... LeBron James is 40, is he still playing like he is now? Yeah. That would be crazy, man. That would just make him the most... You know what? After seeing that, I'm not sure whether he can get Kareem now. That's especially right. with this stupid COVID-19. Yeah. God, why Come is he on, LeBron, do so it. quick? Do it. He can do it. He can, I hope so. Do it. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cry when he retires. I'm going to cry so much. Really? Oh, hell yeah. I, I cried when Kobe retired. Really? Yeah. When he said mum out, tears. <laughs> Far out. Oh, it was just, it was like, just a, it's like, fuck, Kobe Bryant's not going to play anymore. The iconic, you know? Yeah, okay. Well, I'm a Spurs fan. Mm-hmm. I didn't cry about Tim Duncan. <laughs> I didn't cry when we it's Tony Parker signed with the Hornets. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't cry with, with Ginobili. It's completely different. Is it completely different, Tim, Tim Duncan? Tim Duncan's not as iconic as as Kobe Bryant was. I feel the type of player they were. Okay, Kobe, he, Kobe touched a lot of people. Yeah, he? Tim Duncan maybe isn't an icon, yeah. but in terms of legend at a ball club, yeah, he's Spurs. the same. He'd be the same as Kobe. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, I don't know. It depends on the type of person now. Yeah. Yep. Me and Ness on the couch both shed one tear. Far out. Kobe. I didn't know that. Yep. I, I thought Vanessa would. Yeah. So yeah. Vanessa, so you guys know, is did. is Chris's sister, um, and she is the star of our women's 
Premier One <laughs> Stallions team. The star. <laughs> well, well, is she a star now? She definitely was a star for the team, <laughs> but she's a legend. Ah. She's Stallions legend. She she could look. Spoiler. Spoiler. I'm not saying Vanessa was about to go into the Stallions Hall of Fame. Yeah. But there was going to be a Stallions Hall of Fame. We we're going to introduce it this year, the gala dinner. Well, she's going to have to retire. Because it's the five-year oh. Stallions anniversary. Yeah, right. And five five years ago, we... God, I hope, I hope COVID... Five, five years ago, I think, this month. We sat in the UC we sat in that, boardroom. Yeah. And I was there. Yeah, and I told you in the drive. Remember what I was telling you on the drive? What? People are going to... People are going to talk about God. this moment. You are meeting the ambitions you have. I'll give you that. It sounded crazy. But, at the we'll start. see. I wanted to be bigger than what we are now, but um. What by this time already? Yeah, I thought we'd be doing more. Really? I mean, it's we've got easy. like fifty-seven teams, the biggest basketball club in Canberra. Yeah, just quietly. Um, we we're in Prem One and Two now for men and women. Yeah. We brought over That's an import bit. this year. That's a fair bit. Yeah. How is is he here? No, nah, he's back in Seattle. He went back home. Not coming back. Maybe Until, next year. Yeah. We're hoping we bring him over next year. He was supposed to be our first. Mm. Well, sorry. He was supposed to be ours in the podcasts. Right. Oh, first yeah. guest. First guest, right. That would have been cool. That was my vision. It's naturally. I'm that was my that. vision. Having Juwan there. That was his name, Juwan Stepney. Shout out. Um, Juwan Stepney was supposed to be sitting across from me telling me his life story. Mm, that would have been cool. Telling me about hoops in America and Seattle and story. then... Well, I mean, I had to – look, when he went back to Seattle, it just quickly became, okay, who do you get? Chris Hatzis. Straight away, you were the first. <laughs> I don't know why, but thank you. No, you were the first. I had, to get, I had to get you on. I had to get you on. Um, but, Jay, you know what? We're flowing here. Yeah. But well, – Definitely flowing. Flowing a little too much because we can't get this conversation done. Well, I thought we had done it. No, we haven't done it. We haven't done it yet. I don't know if I support LeBron fully. Okay, well, you argue. Okay, why Michael? Because the bloke, the bloke changed the world. Changed the world. He, and watching the last dance and everything, you just see this bloke was infamous. Like, he, everyone loved him. You see the shots of the reporters, a group of 20 reporters, like, shoving microphones this close to his face. You don't even see that with LeBron, and he's probably the most famous basketball player here. Yeah, well, they don't—they don't, they don't have those microphones now. Now they've got. <laughs> That's true. It's but. It's, <laughs> <laughs> well, they just—they just put that on the table. Yeah, I know, I know. But like, he was much more famous. He's like, and the shoes he sold and everything. I'd like to know how does his shoe sales and everything fare up against it? Like, you know, well, what his I mean? shoe sales wouldn't compare at all to Jordan's. It wouldn't compare at all I to know, Jordan's. I know. That's what I'm saying. The bloke was, he was like a revolution. He changed. Well, he brought, put basketball on the map. He put more. Nike on the map. Put Nike on the map. I didn't know that till how, like, they were just pretty small compared to Adidas and that. Put, put Nike on, on the, the map. map. Yeah. Did a lot of shit, man. I don't know. He's a, he was fucking, I love his competitive nature. He's more competitive than LeBron. It's a new age. Yeah. So, well, you, you know what? Because I was thinking about this today. And the other thing is, sorry. Oh, here you go, off. you go. He's so wise. Everything he says on these interviews and that, he's actually really wise. I didn't realize how wise he was. Yeah, well, you don't become a billionaire. Yeah. As a dumbass. <laughs> no, but I don't know. He's just very wise. Well, no no NBA player has become a billionaire. He's except, the only one. That's another thing. He's a he's goat the only in every one. way, man. But... He is. He was a goat in every way. I don't know. I can't decide who's the goat. I feel like I'm speaking too soon if I say it's LeBron. Well, okay. I've got to see the end of his career before I say it. I think after he's retired, I'm going to make the call. Given you see everything. From I, him. I can make that call now. Yeah. Um, I could but, make but, that call. But talking about I talk talking about. I was about to wrap this thing up, but I'm just going to keep going. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much longer, but we'll see. Yeah, we've been going a while, though. Yeah, it's, it's been hard. nearly an hour and a half. Um, talking about leaving a legacy it's pretty much – and actually changing the world. Yeah. Okay, leaving a legacy. Well, Ron James is obviously doing – he's got a small legacy too. He's got a big but, legacy. But um, Space Jam. Yeah. 
Okay, and I brought this up in the goat debate last yeah, time, and you shut me you, you shut me yeah, down. But yeah. um, do you want to remind us? Yeah, you say what you said. So, so I said, I said maybe we should wait till Space Jam Two comes out, and we compare which one made more money. And then I said, the only reason Space Jam Two would be a thing, a thing, and and do so well is because of Space Jam One. Michael exactly. Jordan. That movie was shit. It was a great movie. It's a bunch of cartoons. The only reason it did so well, Michael Jordan was in it. You put any other NBA player in it, it doesn't go close. It doesn't go close. Do you know what I mean? What's that? Oh, is that the new one? That's a, that's a pretty cool logo. That's a new Space Jam logo. That's a sick logo. I like that. It's really retro. That's a sick logo. When's that coming out? Next year? What did I do? <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah. You saw it. Yeah. Um, June next year, yeah. Space Jam, so a like new I legacy. Said, yeah. Like I said, it's, it's a, you put, if you would put any other NBA player from that time when they did it, other than Michael Jordan, it wouldn't have done what it did. Well, Charles Barkley kind of did pretty good in that movie. Yeah, but like if he was the main character, Wait, well, okay, you'd you know, be you thinking Chuck. Take, take a just relax, mate. Yeah. What are you doing, making a fucking Luke's movie? <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, fuck off. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Jordan, it's awesome, you know. Okay, not necessarily athlete, but the person who stole the show for me in Space Jam. Mm. I, I think he's very underrated. In Space Jam, yeah. he was he was actually unbelievable. In Space Jam, <laughs> unbelievable. Bill Murray. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bill Murray. Oh my God, he was good in that movie. Oh, that? There, there's a scene. It, it's just subtle things. Yeah. Subtle things. So, and, and it, I'll, I'll give you this one example, and then we'll we'll stop with um yeah. with the Space Jam, but the, the film critiquing. Yeah. There's a scene where so so Michael Jordan puts his hand down to get his golf ball, yeah. And Wayne Knight, I think the actor's called, fat guy. He's in yeah. Jurassic Park. He was in Seinfeld. He doesn't get movie roles or TV roles anymore because he's not fat. Right. Just FYI. Right. Um, he's so he's taking a photo of Michael Jordan reaching into the golf hole to bring out the ball, mm. and he gets sucked in. Right. Lou Tune suck him in, <laughs> and then. So Wayne Knight's holding the camera. He turns to Bill Murray. Bill Murray grabs the camera, throws it, says, don't point that thing at me. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he had a lot of subtle things. That's good. So, yeah, Bill Murray had a lot of subtle things like that throughout Space Jam. Don't point that thing at me. Unbelievable. Yeah. Bill Murray was great. <laughs> Bill Murray <laughs> was goat. so good. Yeah, right. Bill Murray was so good. Oh, I've got to watch that movie again. So good. Um. <laughs> You do need to watch that movie yeah, again, but really do, do, wait till next. Wait till next year when the new one comes out. Mm. Watch it beforehand. Yeah. I don't know if there's going to be any. Surely there's going to be some kind of. Oh yeah, there'll be there'll linkage. Be yeah, yeah. surely. And, and I really, I do hope Michael Jordan makes an appearance. That'd be sick. I don't think he will. I think he is. Of course, he's going to be in the movie. Are you serious? No. You don't think Michael Jordan's going to be in Space I'd Jam too? I love if he did. I love if he was. But would Michael Jordan take a back seat to LeBron James in anything? Do you think he would? Would he come and be the the fucking cameo in the LeBron James movie? I think he will. And oh, here's why. But the bloke doesn't... He's number one or he's nothing. Here is why. Yeah. Here is why. And I said, I've said i said this to you before. Michael Jordan is not a statue. Yeah, and he doesn't want he's to be. He's not a memory. Yeah. He wants to be current. He's not the past. He's the present. Okay? You don't think he's going to be in the newest Space Jam movie? He's going to be in it. The whole reason this last dance point. is it. The whole reason this last dance is even out. Yeah. Because everything that's in it, I told you. What was what was the one thing that I've learnt new from it? Um, Dennis Robin's leopard Dennis hair Robin's was actually yeah. threes. Yeah. That's the one thing I've learned from this whole yeah. entire thing. So it's, it's, everything's it's been said before. The same thing. The only reason for this, the sake of and reliving even, the, the past. Uh, look, last dance. A lot of people are going uh, great. Like, oh yeah, it's so good. It's all right. It's all right. It, it, it is okay. But but you know, you know what? Yeah, exactly. It's not blowing it's my not mind either. W one thing I'm just going to say to the person who made it, okay, we've all seen Michael Jordan's highlights. 
We've all seen them before. Okay, every single highlight you show, we've it's, seen. I've seen it on Facebook even. It's, yeah, they are showing the most stock standard. Every highlights. yeah, but, but every, every highlight, highlights. every single one of his highlights, we've seen from every angle. Everyone yeah. that is watching it has seen it before. Yeah. Okay. So you've got to make the correct music choices yeah. for the make highlight packages. Completely the wrong music <laughs> they've done so far. I heard. Look, LL Cool J, I heard old school LL Cool J, early days LL Cool J. Now, LL Cool J was a badass back in the day. You know, this isn't LL Cool J doing duets with Jennifer Lopez like he did, <laughs> like he did more recent, well, not recently, but 20 years ago, yeah. or close to 20 years ago. Yeah. But going beyond that, he was a badass. Mm. But that's not Michael Jordan. No one listened to LL Cool J. You've got to play global music. Yeah, yeah. You gotta play music that. Agreed. You know what I mean. The only thing they got right was after they were talking about Doug Collins. Remember the episode where they're talking about the coach before yeah. Phil Jackson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doug and Doug Collins was saying, you know, Michael Jordan was defense player of the MVP, did all these things during his time. Mm. He also did some of those things during Phil's time. Yeah. But then they played a Michael Jordan highlights package after that. Now there's been so many already throughout this documentary. That was the only good one. Yeah, right. That was the only good one. You know why? Party Man by Prince was the music they picked. <laughs> that, that's the only reason why. They actually used Prince. Party Man by Prince. They actually used Prince, yeah. you know. Yeah. He appeals to everyone. Yeah. 100%. Okay? You use that guy's music. <laughs> use Michael Jackson's music. You don't yeah. use LL Cool J before anyone knew who he was. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, Mama Said Knock You Out was a good song, <laughs> but we're not, we're not using LL Cool J back in the day. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Music choice is poor. I do like some of the directive, some of the direct, like the way it's been directed and that. I like the, I like the timeline, even though it's a bit choppy. And like I said, you fuck, you pick up your phone, you don't know what you're yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you're paying attention, it keeps sort of refreshing. You're not following one linear thing and sort of getting bored and like, oh, I know that I know what happened this year, you know, lose focus. It keeps chopping and changing and it's cool because it keeps showing you the difference of character, all the development in these people yep. from to the last season, from, you know, back from the first and then they make a new way through. Like you see, it's cool, I reckon. You see Rodman on their team and like doing his thing and then you see him on the Detroit Pistons destroying him, like smashing. Oh, uh, yeah, him. yeah. It's cool to have the contrast of like that. It is actually cool. So that's cool. That. I like that. Some of the things, like, I do like it. Yeah. It's not blowing my mind. It isn't blowing my mind. You know, another thing they did a lot of, they've borrowed from other documentaries. Oh, yeah. So in the most, the ones that they just, the two episodes they just showed mm. where they were talking, they were going back to the 92 season. Yeah. Which was also the dream team year and the year they played the Portland Trailblazers in the NBA finals. Yeah. Um, they were just borrowing Michael Jordan airtime. Yeah, right. Michael Jordan airtime. I've got that on... <laughs> VHS. Same thing. I've seen it before. They, they were stealing. Really? Well, it wasn't stealing. They probably paid for it or did yeah. whatever they needed to do. Well, they used the same footage. But yeah, it was the same footage. Same, same footage. That's and even place. even Michael Jordan saying the thing about Clyde Drexler. So he was... He when was, he says, uh, I was insulted. He was insulted that people were like Is that comparing not from them. Last Dance Original? Is that from Airtime? That's from Airtime. The same quote, everything... Um, all the stuff they were saying was no, no. The, the foot, did you see the old footage of Michael Jordan sitting down? Yeah, he's wearing a black singlet, I yeah. think, and he's sitting down there with his goatee. Right. No, no, not really much of a moustache, just the goatee. Oh, uh, not really. Can't remember. Well, it. when they're flashing back to '92, that's Michael Jordan airtime. That's that interview. Oh, okay. And he said, I think he said he was insulted in the present in time, present Jordan. One. Yeah. But he said that same thing in the '92 oh, one. Okay. But they were flashing back to the '92 yeah. one. Where he was sitting down. Right. Did you, did you know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So they, they've stole some of that footage okay. and some of the storyline. So I've already seen that. Mm. But they didn't really defend Dr Clyde Drexler at all in that. <laughs> Cly Clyde Drexler. They're not there to defend him. They're there to soup up them. Clyde Drexler was an absolute legend. Wait until I show you these numbers. Wait until you see this. <sighs> Yeah, oath. Oath. Yeah, he played a few seasons there. So you, just, you, you can just see that there. That's, yeah. That's yeah, prime yeah. Portland years. He's putting up big numbers. Oh, yeah. Rebounds. Look at the rebounds, assists, the steals. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, he was big on steals. Big numbers. And, and big I'll get, on steals. yeah, I'll get this up for everyone at home. But um, you can see what I'm talking about. Clyde Drexler was putting up big numbers and they just said he was insulted and that was it. Yeah. I, I would have cool. loved for them to have Clyde Drexler. <laughs> Why didn't they have Clyde Drexler? You know, they, they have Magic Johnson. They have some of Michael's opponents talking. Why don't they have Clyde Drexler? You know, Clyde, Clyde Drexler won an NBA championship. Mm. And with so that was with Houston. He won a championship. And he went to uh, NBA Finals too with Portland. Okay, that Portland team back in the early 90s, late 80s was a great team. Mm. And when we were talking about the Jordan, the last time we discussed the GOAT debate, and the whole Jordan didn't face tough teams thing. Yeah. Remember how that got no, brought up? He did. He did. The 92 I was Port wrong to, if I said it that way, I was wrong. The 1992 Portland Trailblazers are one of the great yeah. NBA teams never to win a championship. Clyde Drexler, Cliff Robinson, Clifford he Robinson, faced tough teams. Terry Porter, Jerome Kersey, Kevin Duckworth, <laughs> Buck Williams. Okay, Danny Angel's <laughs> on that team. Danny Angel's on that team. <laughs> Um, they also had, I think, the first Egyptian player ever in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Token Egyptian. Nah, yeah, no. But I think what I was saying last time, it, do you think Do you think if Jordan's Bulls team went up against the Golden State team with Durant that won two in a row, do you think they win that? Or do you think Golden State win? Say that one more time. If the Jordan Jordan and his Bulls go up against the fucking twenty, the Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant Warriors, Golden State Warriors, the unstoppable Warriors, do they? Can they win? I think they can. Do you think they beat Golden State? I think they def. I, I think they definitely win. Definitely. I think they win by six or five. I think they win a six or five game series. Yeah. Right. So I think. I think it's comfortable. Then why is why and you know you know why I say that because LeBron couldn't beat them with a pretty good team the first year. LeBron didn't team have good. the good team. It was all right. It wasn't as good as this. The Bulls this is what this is. Well, this is why the Bulls win. Yeah. This is why the Bulls win. Okay. You have on that team Ron Harper, Scottie Pippen, you got a really Michael good Jordan. Defensive team. You don't have that good exactly. defensive team in Cleveland. That's true. Oh, so so yeah. so so you who, who are the big three? Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Durant, and Durant. Okay, Scotty Pippen. Oh, you, you know what? I just said three great defensive players, and I didn't even mention Dennis Rodman. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, Dennis Rodman takes Durant. Yeah. Okay, Dennis. He doesn't even need Scotty Pippen could take Durant. Michael Jordan's. You're right. They're such Clay Thompson, defensive. Ron Harper taking uh, Steph Curry with that length that he has. He was like six five, six six, yeah. or six seven. He might have even been bigger. They do win that. I agree. Okay, and, and then wh wh who does Dennis Rodman defend? Whoever the fuck he wants. He you know what I mean? He probably defends. Ke he probably actually defends yeah. a lot of Kevin Durant too. And then if 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 you're saying, well, what about Draymond Green? Well, that's where the extra defender goes. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? What about Draymond Green? Yeah. let him run around. And, and not, only, his one not only those great defensive players, but there was another great defensive player on that Chicago Bulls team board called Randy Brown. Mm. Okay, he's you, you see his face in, in through throughout this last dance. He was in that second three, Pete. He's another great defensive player. Six two, I think, shooting guard. Who did you have guard. Jordan defending? Thompson. I don't, well, you know what? Jordan probably says, "Screw that! I want to defend whoever the best." Yeah, does definitely say that. Jo Jordan actually probably. Uh, do you reckon he defends Steph Curry? Yeah, I don't think he defends Durant. Durant's too lanky. Well, no, no, but he's not. Yeah, he's not going to defend Durant. It's either Clay Thompson or Steph Curry. You reckon he's going to take Steph Curry? Steph Curry, hundred percent. Okay, well there you go. He takes Steph. Going to take the man with the ball. Okay, take Steph Curry. Mm. Ron Harper can take uh, Clay Thompson. Scotty Pippen's on Kevin Durant. Yeah. Dennis Rodman, Scotty Pippen, and Dennis Rodman are shifting on Durant. Yeah. Yeah. One at a time, tag yeah. teaming that one. Yeah. Okay. The I Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls killed the Golden State Warriors. That's not even a match. Yeah. That's not even a match. I agree. Then, Comfortable. Yeah. No, I agree. You're right. Um, and then Luke Longley. Luke Longley, you know, he, he was just a role player for the Bulls. Well, let's see. What does Luke Longley do? D does Luke Longley play and try to – you know what, Luke – you know what, screw Luke Longley. He can stay on the bench. <laughs> if Let the Bulls go small ball like the Warriors. Yeah. Oh, my 
God. Very small wall. See you, Warriors. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. This is what... Oh, just... The way the NBA is or was during those seasons fucking just made me lose interest. Stop. 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 God. Before, let, How much better just are stop. the highlights from back... I want to. I want to go back to the Golden State Warriors Bulls thing. Yeah. Steve Kerr, the coach. Steve Kerr, the player. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so, is. so what does Steve Kerr, the coach, do? He probably wants Steve Kerr, the player, to look even better than he than he was. He's just like, you know, I don't want to make myself look good. <laughs> he probably. Steve Kerr, Let the player, fall. probably knocks down a bunch of threes because they keep leaving him open. Yeah. He's like, no, nah, trust me. He can't do it. I, I, I couldn't deal with the pressure. Trust me. Don't worry about marking up on him. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. hell. Yeah. No, like I was saying, yeah, just lost interest in the NBA for those seasons when no one could touch him because it was so shit because, like, it weren't that Yeah, well, you, you had four straight NBA finals of Golden State, Cleveland. Mm. Yeah. Now, watching Cle- Cleveland was actually battling. Yeah, Cleveland game was. I just liked their game better. Yeah, Golden State just fucking. I just hated them. They just made the NBA shit. That Durant going there, and everyone knew from the trade. Everyone knew from the as soon as it happened, he he knew the NBA was ruined because you were like you already just took the team that probably one seventy three games have won and the championship won. choked right. LeBron James coming back from three one, that is a massive. That's a massive thing for him being the GOAT, for me. That 3-1 championship, he was down 3-1, comes back and wins it. That's Jordan's like, never done that. No, he's, he, he hasn't, but fucking, like, that's something else altogether, man. Like, that was crazy. That was pretty crazy. I watched every game live, like, and that game they won, I swear to God, never been that happy in my life. What, what, were you at school still? Yeah, but I think we were on, we had, like, exams. It was, like, around exams. Yeah, it's always... I ended up having all the games off. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is that, so that's year 11, like year 12? Yeah, I was in year... I think it was in year 12. Yeah, year 12. I was in year 12. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, craziest thing. Craziest thing. Yeah, that I've is unbelievable. That, like, you know? so, so it was... I've never done that. It, it was that moment where... People call LeBron a choker. He's like, well, look, when, Cle- when LeBron first left Cleveland to join Miami, I hated him. Yeah, you I thought said, that's yeah. the most ridiculous thing ever. What yeah. the hell are you doing? <laughs> I, I actually wanted to film. I wanted to be one of those guys that burnt the jersey. <laughs> but I didn't. I've still got him. I've still got my LeBron James jerseys. Um, does he win any championships if he doesn't do that? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, you don't think he wins at no, all? No, he does. He does. But he's got to get oh, well, who, who, no, who knows? Does Cleveland have Kyrie Irving? Do you just Irving? hate that he went to join a super team as if you like? It wasn't the super team thing. It was the fact that he left annoyed me. Yeah. Um, you want him to say and I, And the fact that it was Miami, like I just felt like if you're going to go anywhere, go to New York. Go to New York. You, you know what New York, the New York Knicks gave him a really good pitch. No, so no. LeBron, one of LeBron James's favorite no, TV been, shows. It would have been awesome if he had gone to New York and actually made something of him and maybe stayed there for the rest of his career or something. Imagine how different the story would be. Oh, that'd be unbelievable. It'd be sick. People obviously going to come play with LeBron James. Yeah. That franchise could be a massive, you know. Exactly. Winning franchise again. But but the, the, the Knicks pitch to LeBron that year, okay? LeBron's favorite television show is The Sopranos. Mm. Favorite television show is The Sopranos. They get that, what was his name? Gandolfini? Is that his name, oh, the actor's no name for Sopranos, Gandolfini? Is it James Gandolfini? <laughs> I don't think so. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I, think I think his name's James Gandolfini. Yeah. People are going to be laughing at me. He's a legend. What are you doing? <laughs> you are you, you going to look it up? Yeah, yeah James Gandolfini. Yeah. Nice. They get James Gandolfini and they get the actress that played his wife. I don't even remember her name. Yeah. No one needs to remember. No one knows her name. But they get him. They get her. And they film a soprano scene. Not not for the and show. The pitch. They film it as a pitch and they play it to, to LeBron. Jesus. Him reading it was something to do with him reading the newspaper and it having LeBron James either signing with the Knicks or LeBron James doing something for the Knicks. Wow. And him reading it. That, that's a good pitch. He should have gone there. That's I mad. know. That's actually that, that's what the Knicks did. Yeah. That's what the Knicks did. They got that's big they filmed pitching. a Sopranos that's, scene. That's big market pitching. 
Uh, God, it would have been cool if you went there now that you've said it. I, that's why I was so upset. I thought, I thought you either stay at Cleveland or you go to New York. What the hell are you doing going to uh, Miami? Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. So anyway, he goes to Miami, hate him, hate him, hate him. <laughs> and then when he became a free agent again, I thought, well, you've got to stay with Miami. You know, you've got to stay with Miami and keep yeah. this thing going. Yeah. And then he leaves Miami, and I'm like, you wanker. I hate you even when he goes back to Cliff. I'm like, <laughs> you did hate him even more. You're even, I, hated, I hated him even more. <laughs> hated him even more. But then what happens? He gets the championship. I, I, don't, I don't know if it was him getting the championship or just during that season it switched yeah. for me. Yeah. But when he won the championship, it was like, okay, LeBron, I'm back. I'm back, in the, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm back on the bandwagon. <laughs> yeah. Let's, okay. let's do this. But he, he doesn't do anything against Golden State. The next two years. How can you? Unfortunately. Fucking going up against an impossible team to be for what they were. Well, uh, again, it's it, it is pretty tough, but Kevin Rapid Durant tough. misses that box out. Jarrah Smith gets the rebound. We discussed that. That could have changed everything, I reckon. It could have. Big mental game if they had won that first game. He gets a 50-point triple-double, or not a triple-double, but close. LeBron gets a 50-point game, loses it to sheer stupidity. If they win at home against Golden State, maybe that shakes them. Maybe they get game two, or they don't. They might take their home games after that. You know what I mean? Could have changed everything. But exactly. The fact that they lost after they should have won, yeah. their heads would have been so out of the game yeah. after that. It would have been tension in the team. Whole show's fucked. Well, I mean, this is an argument against Tyron Lou. Yeah. What are you doing, mate? What are you doing? And the, I can't believe the Lakers tried to get him before they got um, yeah, their current what the coach. Fuck? Oh, What's what their current the, coach's name again? LeBron must like him because he's his little bitch. <laughs> the new coach or Tyron? No, Tyron. Yeah, he exactly. Just want his little bitch. But they tried to get Tyron Lue, and Tyron Lue was insulted by the money that was offered. Insulted, was he? He was insulted. Whatever he was offered, it wasn't enough for him. He thought, screw this. Fuck off. I know. Well, what, what have you done? Is he still coaching? He's not coaching anyone. That's good. Tony's not coaching How anyone. What money are you making now, bud? But I think he's still getting paid out because I think he got oh, right sacked right. by Cleveland, oh, so he's still getting paid out. Right. Um, and actually, this this is pretty. Maybe this is fair. I, I don't know how true this is. You're gonna have to fact check me at home. But um, I I think um, he's currently getting. He was currently at the time getting paid out by Cleveland. But if he had signed a contract with a new team, he wouldn't be getting that money anymore. Yeah, of course. It so he wanted to make sure that that money was more than mm. it needs to be worth it. He's getting paid. Yeah, it needs to be doing nothing. Yeah, he's getting paid to sit at home. But but it, it, I think I think it was more, but it wasn't enough. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, because you actually have to work. Yeah. So he, yeah, <laughs> I think that I think work. that I think that's what it was. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so that's Tyron Lou. Mm -hmm. He needed to get those boys back in mindset. 100%. But he couldn't do it. No. Nah, poor coaching. Couldn't do it. Well, anyway, Chris. Well, it's been real. I think that's it. I think that's got to be it. Gonna that was long. Sleep. That it was, was now 47. Jesus. 46. Jesus. Definitely flowed. Still counting. <laughs> um, Let's go another one. What's nah, nah, look, we'll, 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 no, we'll, end, we'll end it there because um, it's, a, it's a pretty long one for the first one. Oh, for sure. Um. But yeah, you'll definitely be back on. I look forward to it. People Coming are going to be looking to forward to seeing you. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, well, yeah, we're, we're in the Sav Shark. This is the Outrun, Outrun Sports and Entertainment Podcast. Until next time. Until next time. Until Peace next time. Eating and James Savalitis. <laughs> See you next time.